turned out. Um, you know, really, really proud of these guys for, for finding a way to, to earn victory today. It, it's never easy, you know, two good teams. Uh, uh, Utah State would never go away. You know, every time we maybe had a chance to look like we could get some separation, we just never really could. And, um, you, you know, we, we missed, I thought, a lot of good looks early uh, um, that way. And then, but I thought our defense was terrific early in the game. I thought we did a great job um, of helping each other, of guarding their ball screens, of not giving them transition. And then I thought in the second half, I thought it was a huge factor that, you know, they got into the bonus so early. And they do such a great job of spacing the floor. And as they really started to drive us, and, you know, it was five, it was a parade to the free throw line. And that's kind of what, what kept them going. And then I thought we got a little frustrated with some of the changing defenses. Um, but that's something, again, we'll continue to learn from. But what fight from our guys. And we never flinched, you know, when they came back. And that's the way these games go, man, in conference play. And you just got to find a way to, to, to earn victory. And, we went to a zone a couple times late, uh, uh, found a way to get a stop, and um, David and Isaiah were huge, and obviously so were Jalen and Chandler off the bench. Nick, how impressed were you with the way David handled the final six minutes? You got four fouls, you didn't flinch, you left him on the floor, and he remained on the floor the rest of the way. Yeah, I think, you know, you're thinking in that moment, you're like, okay, do we get him out? And it's like... No, you know, I, I mean, we, we really needed him the way that game was going. And he's such a difficult matchup. You know, he was scoring and drawing help. And, you know, obviously he couldn't be probably as physical as he wanted to, you know, defensively. And hopefully for him, you know, he, he, he'll learn that a couple, you know, you're going to foul. You got five, all right? But maybe a couple of those, you know, he didn't have to foul in those situations because I thought he did a great job on being, you know, defensively that way. And, but, you know, he's a great player, and, and we just needed to trust him in that situation. And, and, you know, I don't know if we win the game if he's not out there. What was the other part of it? A lot of, he wasn't the only one on Dean, but he was there a lot of the time. Was that one of his better defensive performances considering – yeah, I think, you know, early in the game, Bean's such a great player. He's an elite cutter. He's got a great motor. He's been making perimeter shots. I thought early in the game, like the second possession, he got a slip to the basket. And then I thought after that, I thought we did a good job of, you know, staying between him and the basket. I thought we did a good job of keeping him off the boards, you know, for the most part, which is really, really difficult to do. And so that's a testament to David and the other guys who got switched on him, did a great job of, of keeping him off the boards. And I think they're guys, you know, Bearstow and Ashworth. Uh, Bearstow's a difficult cover for us with their spacing. He's a big guard who backs his way down into the paint. And it's very, very difficult to bring help because they got five guys out there who can shoot the ball. And so you got to give them credit for attacking us and, and, and uh, um, you know, getting in the bonus. But I can tell you what, too, our guy stepped up and made free throws down the stretch. Like when we had to, we've been, we've been really good that way. And the guy stepped up with confidence and knocked him down. Just like that, huh? Execute the inbound plays. Yeah, you, you know, and, and you give them credit. You know, they, they, they haven't played a ton of zone, but they started changing defenses and, you know, had us a little bit, you know, discombobulated. And I think even a couple of those end game situations, that, to be honest, that's probably one of the biggest things that we missed on the layoff is, you know, probably haven't done as much of those situations. And so this is a great opportunity to, to, to learn from that. But, and those guys have a ton of poise. You know what I mean? Never in doubt. Stepped up, knocked it down. Isaiah Stevens made a huge shot, you know, there on the baseline. And, you know, that's what great players do. You guys started 2 of 12 from the floor, then followed up with a 14 1 run that was kind of started by a, a steal that went coast to coast. Was that when you felt like the game kind of started to shift in your favor about halfway through the third? I, I think maybe. The one thing I did, like I said, I really liked our defense early. And I did think we were getting some good looks at the basket. They just weren't going down. But that's that's basketball. But we kept, you know, staying with it. And I agree. I thought that play really energized. Jalen Lake, you know, got into the ball, knocked it loose. Zay got to the floor, go in and lay it in. And I thought that just, like you said, picked our energy up, you know, to another level. And, and uh, um, that, that, that was great to see. I mean, Jalen Lake is just brings tremendous energy for us off the bench. You know, I, I, I do, and I, I think, you know, in fairness, I mean, I think that there's probably, you rarely feel like, you know, you, you, you played perfect, you know, and stuff, and they're probably saying the same thing. Yeah, you know, we didn't have our best here or there, but, but I agree. I mean, I, I, I think that 
the seasons are, uh, uh, they're not just linear. You don't go like this. You have peaks and valleys. Things don't always go your way. And sometimes you got to find a way to win when you're not playing your best, you know. And I think that's what this team found a way to do today. I guess a really good team, a team that's difficult to cover. And, man, when they got in the bonus early like that, that's very, very difficult, you know, to, to guard. David picks up his fourth. He's a physical guy in the paint. Probably can't play the way he wants to that way. And, um, but again, we, we found a way to win and that's, what's important. Do you think David embraced you know, a challenge like this against Dean as you know, kind of a, a personal type challenge? Yeah. I mean, I, I think he, he knew, you know, that, that, Hey, I, I really got to have my a game here today, you know, on both ends of the floor. And, um, I thought he stepped up to it. You know, I thought in the first half in particular, um, he did a tremendous job on him. And obviously I think when he got into foul trouble, it was harder to be, you know, as aggressive, but I think so. I mean, I think David knew, you know, Justin Bean's an elite player, player of the year candidate, and, and uh, obviously we got two guys that I think are there too, and uh, David clearly stepped up to the challenge. And looking at teams that have defended David over his career, how much has their game plan really changed to let's we have to try to take away this guy or we have to defend him differently? Just how have you seen teams defend him? I don't, I don't know that, that it's changed. I think as, as time has gone by and these guys are upperclassmen, they start to see a little bit of everything, right? Like some teams double early, some teams double late. Some teams just decide, hey, we're going to go one-on-one -on -one in there because he's such a good passer, you know, out of the post. And I think he's just learned to have patience that way and, and, and as a team, too, to be able to read, you know, how they're playing us. I don't know that it's anything different. I just think it's to the point now as an upperclassman, he's kind of seen it all. You know, and then when that happens, your team is kind of prepared for it, and, and uh, he's just doing a great job of handling whatever's thrown at him. You mentioned Jalen Nate before, but just what can you kind of say about his progression from the start of the season to now? It seems like he's really emerged as a trusted spark off the bench as well. Yeah, he just he's a tremendous amount of confidence, doesn't he? You know, he just doesn't play like a, like a freshman. He's like, he, that's a kid who, who he really believes he belongs. He doesn't get too down on himself, you know, when he makes a mistake. And he's a guy you only have to have to tell once and doesn't get down. He's always trying to get better. He's one of our hardest workers. Uh, um, and he's an incredibly talented guy. And so it's just been fun to, to watch him. And to come out there and like that as a true freshman in a big game and play the way he did, that was that was huge. We probably don't, don't win the game without him. I know you guys are 12-1, and one, but with how well these guys are coming off the bench, Jacob, Smith and Lake, and Anjay, do you put any thought into maybe sliding one of them into the starting line? I don't know. I mean, at the same point in time, I mean, and I know that's important to, to players and stuff, but, you know, I think Kendall and Adam would be the first to tell you, you know, maybe they're not, but but I have so much faith in those guys. You, you know what I mean? And who they are. And, and uh, um, you know, Adam Thistlewood's not going to miss, you know, not going to miss shots like that very often. And so tonight was Jalen and Chandler's uh, a night. They've obviously played really, really well. That's why they're earning more minutes for us. Will we change the lineup? I don't I don't know. I think it's more about finding the right lineups in the right situations, Justin. Thanks, guys. Yep.